When we think about Call of Duty, it brings you a lot of nostalgia, thinking about all the games you played as a kid and the memories you made with your friends. And one of the first things we think about are all the incredible weapons we use. In Modern Warfare 2, you might think of the intervention. With Black Ops, maybe you'll think of weird weapons like the Ballistic Knife. And with Modern Warfare 3, you might remember your first mob with the ACR. But sometimes, we might remember the trash weapons like the Dragonoff from any Call of Duty. But today, we're going to be looking at the most forgotten guns from every Call of Duty because they weren't that good and they weren't that bad. We're starting out with COD 4 and ending with Modern Warfare 3 2023. COD 4 MP44 Surprisingly, this is the same exact gun as the SCG-44, but they just called it the Machine Pistol 44 in World War II Germany. And they did this because they made it against the orders of the bad guy, who didn't want any more rifles designed for the war. That was just a fun fact, but unlike the SCG-44 in COD, this thing stunk in comparison. Most of the other ARs were better, and it wasn't memorable like the STG in other CODs, so people just simply forgot of its existence as it was just a typical fully automatic AR. World at War, the Mosin Nagant? I'm probably saying that wrong. And sniper rifles are always a big part of Call of Duty, and everyone remembers the Springfield and PTRS-41 as the 1A and 1B snipers in World at War. But I've never heard or seen anyone bring up the Moisten the Gaunt since 2008. Normally if a weapon is this bad, it would be remembered for that. It has a painfully slow fire rate at 45 rounds per minute and was a hit marker machine, which is an awful combination. You had to get a neck or headshot to one-shot the enemy, and that paired with its fire rate made it the most useless weapon in all of World at War. But maybe you guys know about the three-line rifle from COD World War II or Vanguard, which is the same weapon, just using a different name. And it was much improved in those games. These videos take a lot of effort to make, so please like the video if you want me to make more. Modern Warfare 2 M240 This game is known for having overpowered weapons in every category, with the ACR, UMP, Intervention, and SPAS-12 as a few examples. And that's why weapons like the M240 aren't quite as memorable, even though it's still pretty good. It was unlocked at level 52, which made it not one of the first guns people used and fell in love with. It was a very low damage LMG, but it made up for this with an extremely fast fire rate at 937 rounds per minute, which is almost unheard of for an LMG. But this fire rate made the gun kick a little bit more than the other LMGs, but it was still very manageable with good iron sights. My only problem with it was that when I shoot the gun, I feel like an old man who can't see because of the muzzle flash blocking the vision of the enemy in the iron sights. It truly was a spray and pray weapon that could be effective. And I'm doing a face reveal to 100k subs, so make sure to hit that button if you want to see me or if you just want to support me. Black Ops 1 Caparis. This is the weapon that sprung this entire video together. I was randomly going back and getting clips from old Call of Duties when I saw the Caparis and thought I should make something about forgotten things in Call of Duty. And now that you're looking at this gun, you'll probably recognize it as the OTS-9 from Black Ops Cold War. It took Call of Duty nine years to finally bring back the Caparis. And like every other Black Ops 1 SMG, its only true issue was its mag size. Never let them tell you size doesn't matter, because this 20 round mag paired with its incredible 937 rounds per minute, oddly the same fire rate as the M240 from MW2 we just talked about, it was a problem. Even with the extended mag, it was only 30 rounds, making the ammo disappear in the blink of an eye. It's a shame because it would have been amazing with a 40 to 50 round mag. Modern Warfare 3 PM9 it is forgotten because it was only ever within this very game, Modern Warfare 3. You may think it looks a little like the Mac 10 or Mac 11, but it's a completely different weapon. Personally, I loved how you carry the gun around in one hand that makes it look more like a machine pistol instead of an SMG. And I've been talking about fire rates a lot recently in this video, and it won't change with this gun that fired at 1111 rounds per minute, which might have made it a lucky gun. And if you put rapid fire on it, it shot at an insane 1388 rounds per minute, which is one of the fastest fire rates in Call of Duty history, and you could have a 48 round extended mag, which made it killer up close. But the drawback was poor range and a decent chunk of recoil, which made it not as easy to use as a fan favorite SMG like the MP7. But it could work greatly in the correct player's hands. Quick side note, I wonder how the game decided which one of these two players got to live from my reaper in the final kill cam? And from a selfish perspective, give me both of the kills and make us win with 76 of them. Black Ops 2 QBB LSW In a game filled with beloved weapons, the QBB stuck in the background even though it was a good weapon. The damage was a bit low because it was the lowest damage LMG in Black Ops 2, but it could still 3-shot kill while having an eerily familiar fire rate of 937 rounds per minute. And I swear, I didn't do this on purpose, but that's the third weapon to have that exact fire rate in this video. Why does Call of Duty like that fire rate so much? I don't know. But unlike the other weapons, this one had very low recoil, making it extremely easy to use. Pretty much this weapon was a slow-moving mid-range king that fell off at long range. 
which sounds like a good weapon for multiplayer that people just slept on. Ghosts, IA-2, the first marksman rifle of the video, and it could be deadly with good accuracy and a good trigger finger. It's a semi-auto weapon that could fire up to 545 rounds per minute and could one-shot kill to the head and neck at close to mid-range which in normal CODs would make this weapon automatically a top tier gun, but in Ghosts, everything kills so quickly with little recoil that friendlier and easier to use weapons would destroy it at close to mid range. If you missed a bullet or didn't get that headshot, you were cooked. With guns like the MTAR X, Vector, Honey Badger, and Remington R5, the IA2 was only good in a good player's hands, but it had arguably the highest potential of any weapon in the game. But most players would just go with something easy to use and completely forget about the IA2's existence. Advanced Warfare MK14 Maybe the least futuristic gun in this game and originally coming from Modern Warfare 3 where it's a bit more memorable because it was amazing. And the MK14 is yet another semi-auto weapon, but this time it's categorized as an AR. I remember it because instead of getting lucky, and getting elite variants like the BAL-27 Obsidian Cedar and ASM-1 Speakeasy, I got two elite MK-14 variants. Yippee! As you can tell, I'm very happy about that. And in this game, you see me using the Eagle's Eye variant. And the problem with a gun like the MK-14 in a jetpack Call of Duty is that it's so much harder to be precise and hit your shots with people flying around. And you'll probably notice from my gameplay, it looks good sometimes and not so good other times. And that's because of headshots. And the only way this weapon was good in Advanced Warfare was if you hit a headshot to make it a two-shot kill. I don't think anyone used it or remembers it. And please let me know in the comments which weapons you have remembered and not remembered from my picks in this video. Black Ops 3 XR2. This was a very good burst rifle, but fell victim to being the second best burst AR in Black Ops 3 to the M8A7, the futuristic version of the fan favorite M8A1 from Black Ops 2. The XR2 was a three round burst instead of four, but that didn't stop it from being able to one burst kill enemies with almost no recoil. And as someone who used every base gun in Black Ops 3 a lot, because I got dark matter camo, I can tell you, this was one of the best weapons in the game and it didn't get enough love. Also, I didn't want to use supply drop weapons because obviously a bunch of people wouldn't remember weapons they didn't get to luckily pull. And a fun fact about Black Ops 3 is that it currently is a top 10 selling game on Xbox this year. So if you want to play it, you still can and maybe give the XR2 a try because it's very underappreciated and forgotten. Infinite Warfare, Augur. This thing looks like a minigun, which is awesome, but the Augur is probably the second worst LMG in Infinite Warfare. Warfare. But what's interesting about it is that the initial fire rate is extremely slow, but the longer you hold down the trigger, the faster it shoots, meaning the best way to use it is just to hold the trigger and clear out a hard point with it. But in regular modes like TDM or Free For All where people don't stack up next to each other, it's not very good. COD World War II VMG 1927, honorable mention to Austin. I wanted to pick the Austin because that's my name, even if they spelled it wrong, but I don't have that gun unlocked. And I bet the majority of you have no idea what type of gun the VMG 1927 was until you're seeing this gameplay. It's an LMG, and it was the fastest mobility and fastest reloading light machine gun in COD World War II. But it fired kind of slowly and didn't kill that fast. So while it has positives, I really didn't like using it for this video, especially considering I couldn't get a good connection while going back to this game. I don't mind forgetting about this weapon again. Black Ops 4, Tiger Shark. Besides having a sick name, this gun was actually pretty good. It came out after the launch of the game, but you could specifically choose what guns you wanted to unlock in Black Ops 4, which gave everyone the chance to get this LMG that felt a little bit like an AR because it has a quick reload and a smaller mag at 48 rounds. The fire rate is a bit slow at 505 rounds per minute, but it has very low recoil and hit hard. But it wasn't the best LMG in the game, so even though it has a sick name, it couldn't make you remember the Tiger Shark. And a fun fact, I actually had a project in the third grade about Tiger Sharks, and it was sick. MW 2019, AN-94. Everyone remembers the AN-94. It's one of the best guns in Call of Duty history from Black Ops 2, but no one remembers the much worse version in MW 2019. It had the same properties where it has the hyper burst where the weapon fired a rapid two round burst each time you pulled the trigger. But it didn't hit the same because the base fire rate was much slower than the Black Ops 2 version and it had slightly lower damage. The forgotten about AN-94 can't hold up to its predecessor. Cold War, UGR. This was my least favorite weapon to use in this entire video. And what's with the extremely weird starting magazine of 27 bullets? Like why? 
And with these more recent CODs, I'm definitely taking the liberty of using guns added super late into them, because the UGR wasn't added to Cold War until Season 3 of Vanguard. And there wasn't anything special about it. A slow fire rate, not that accurate, not that high of damage. It was only made to torture me getting these clips. Just kidding, but I don't know why they added this weapon at all, and that's why you don't remember it. Vanguard M1916. We are back to another marksman rifle, but this time it fits the game pretty well being a World War II title. And like every marksman rifle, it has high damage, is semi-auto, and uses sniper ammo. If you hit your shots, it can work well, but if you miss, you won't have a good time. It works the best if you move strategically from point to point because its sprint to fire and ADS aren't very good and will lose to ARs and SMGs if you get caught running. It's so basic with such a basic name that it just doesn't stand out. MW2 MX Guardian. I don't think I've ever used the shotgun in Modern Warfare 2 before making this video, and I just picked some variant I had of it, and it was an absolute blast. Which is saying something with the worst Call of Duty ever. I went 37 and 5, including a 20 gun streak, but I still caught a couple deaths to hardcore campers. And the funniest part about this gameplay is I thought it was a semi automatic shotgun while playing this game. And it turns out it was fully automatic the whole time. And somehow I still dominated with it. The only way for this COD to be fun is to troll people with BS weapons. And I just found out the MX Guardian shotgun is perfect for that. So if you ever feel like playing Modern Warfare 2, which I don't know why you would, please give this one a try. Modern Warfare 3, TAC Evolvir. This LMG was added in Season 1 and it was about the 50th gun in the last two CODs to be called the TAC something or another, and is the second TAC LMG in Modern Warfare 3, which might be why some people can't remember it with too generic of a name in recent games. But this LMG is pretty good but the skill-based matchmaking was in full effect for this game, making sure I couldn't win. Look at the scoreboard. My entire team went extremely negative. 10 and 42, what are they doing? And they barely combined for more kills than me. They gave the other team streaks the entire game. Only reason Mr. 18 and 42 got a couple minutes on the objective was because I was protecting his bot self. But the tag of all Vera is a 100 round mag, low recoil, and a pretty good TTK. The only con is the pretty big delay in shooting after running, but that makes sense because it's an LMG. Did you remember any of these weapons? Probably a couple. But if you want to see some of the best weapons in COD history that you most certainly have many great memories with, click here. I know you'll enjoy it. Peace.